We see Jesus entering to Jerusalem for the final week of his life. Let's see what happens. Hey, welcome to Bible Time. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the time where we just read the Bible together. My goal is to get everybody who I know to read the Bible every day because it's worth it. It's that good. I just want to remind you, you don't always have the most amazing steak dinner every day that you just remember because it was at the most expensive restaurant ever, but you probably eat every day. And it's the same with reading the Bible, spending time in God's Word that we're not always going to have the most amazing meal every day, but it's something that sustains us. And so statistics say that if you're trying to follow the way of Jesus and you read the Bible at least four days a week, you're going to live a much, much healthier life. And so I want to see all my friends healthy and uh, serving the Lord with all their heart, falling in love with Him more and more. And so it's my goal that we would just, uh, through this simple means of a video, read the Bible together every day. So thanks for joining me. We're picking up in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, where we just read is that says that one of Jesus' best buddies who he really loved, Lazarus, and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Lazarus was sick, and it says, because Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, he stayed a few days after he heard he was sick, and then by the time he got there, he had been dead four days lying in the tomb. And then we saw this passage yesterday that says, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he's he's inviting them to believe in him in the spiritual before he does something in the physical but that's where we're picking up is what is he going to do in the physical what takes place all right verse 28 chapter 11 john 11 verse 28 when she when she had said this she went and called her sister mary saying in private the teacher is here and he is calling for you and when she had heard it she rose quickly and went to him now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in, in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Same thing that her sister said. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And the shortest verse in the Bible that everybody likes to memorize, Jesus wept. It just shows that he, he had compassion and care in him. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Of course, the answer is yes. But what they experienced in the physical was not that reality. And so it is tough for us to continue to believe in God when what we're seeing and experiencing does not match up with what it is that we hoped for and expected from him. So let's see what happens. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. She's saying, Hey, he's going to be rotting, and it's going to be gross. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Here's this word again, belief, and the why, the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on the account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to, him, said to them, 
unbind him and let him go man this must have been just so creepy this mummy guy that's been dead four days jesus heals him and he walks out man so jesus raises the dead amazing miracle Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Martha, with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man for performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. This is crazy that they're they're acknowledging that if they let him keep on doing miracles, everyone will, there's the word, believe in him. And their concern is that the Roman Empire will come and take away their nation. It's just absolutely crazy that in, in light of the miracles that he was doing, it wasn't changing their heart, changing their opinion, drawing them to him. It was uh, making them even more try to figure out a way to get rid of him. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one, chi one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. Jesus, therefore, no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up from the, from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should let them know so that they might arrest him. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was in it. I just think it's interesting that uh, he had charge of the money bag. He was helping himself to it. Jesus knows all things. He knew what he was doing, and yet he still let him be in charge of the money. Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death, to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus <laughs> it's so funny they're trying to put to death the guy that Jesus just ra raised from death <laughs> and their concern again is that people are believing in Jesus on the next day a large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem so they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him crying out Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord 
even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, O daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The world has gone after him. Let's do one more. Now among those who went up to worship him at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who were from Bethsaida in Galilee. They asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for, here's that other word that keeps coming up, eternal life. And if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there he will be also. And if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Beautiful passage today. Kind of a transition point here between uh, these miracles that he's doing and uh, what is going to be, um, you know, the, the final week of his life. We call it the Passion. So the triumphal entry marks... The beginning of the Passion Week, which is the last week of his life. And, you know, I don't know if there's anything too, you know, super huge in this passage. I think for me, what stands out the most is that uh, Jesus came and he raises Lazarus from the dead uh, in the physical but he goes out of his way to really talk about how it's the spiritual uh, belief and eternal life that matter because uh, what's going to happen is eventually someday Lazarus is going to die again. And, you know, it's not like uh, Jesus is going to just continually raise him from the dead, raise him from the dead. This was a, a, a miracle, a mighty miracle for a moment. But it, the reality is that all of us are going to die in the flesh at some point. Even if we're asking for miracles, seeing miracles, um, we're all going to die. And, uh, and so it's important to keep in perspective that it's not just this life that matters. And so, I don't know, for me, what I'm taking away today is what am I doing in this life? What am I focusing on that maybe doesn't matter so much? What am I getting really worked up about and, uh, angry about and worried about and stressed about that at the end of the day doesn't really matter. Uh, Jesus had one mission on this earth and though it was, you know, he would, he would raise people from the dead. He would heal blind eyes. He would heal shriveled hands. He would do miracles and feed 5,000 people. At the end of the day, all of those uh, temporal physical miracles fade away. They don't ultimately in eternity matter. His purpose was to come and bring a message of life and life eternal for all of us. And so I hope and pray that I can always remember as I walk around this planet, sucking air, talking to people in the grocery store, at the gym, at church, my wife, my kids, I need to remember that what really matters is the deeper things, the more important things, the spiritual things that I need to, like Jesus, be a giver of life in all things that I do. So those are kind of my thoughts. I hope you have your own thoughts. If you have some thoughts that God's speaking to you, I'd love to hear them. Uh, maybe send me a message or share a comment. And hey, if you know anybody that would benefit from these videos, um, 
I know it's not just the most amazing Bible study every time, but uh, us just getting in the Word, staying consistent, I think keeps us healthy. And so I just think there's probably so many people out there that own a Bible but just never pick it up or don't know how to read it or they get confused. And so if this type of type of thing that would help them, would you just mind sharing this with somebody um, or tagging them or sending it to them or something? Because I just want to help people out that have a, have a hard time getting in and staying consistent. So that's one of my goals with this. Other than that, I'm so glad that you joined me today, and I hope that God will lead you today and bless you.